I don't get it, Johnny. About these two other guys. You mean there's going to be two other guys in on the deal? And we ain't going to know who they are? That's right. You don't know who they are, and they don't know who you are. That makes sense to you, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I guess so, but I... Makes sense to me, all right. How come we need them, though, Johnny? What are they going to do? Oh, one of them's for the job with a rifle. None of you boys can handle that, even if you were willing to. And the other one starts the fight in the bar. These other fellows, how much are they cutting in for? Not that I mind. Anything you do is okay, but... Where's... These men are not going to be in on the basic scheme. They're getting paid to perform certain definite duties at a certain definite time. And they're not cutting in on the take. They'll be paid a flat price to do a straight job. Well, if they don't know anything about the basic plan, about the job, then why are they doing it? That's simple. These boys are straight hoods. They get paid in advance. Five grand for the one with the rifle and 2,500 for the other. Well, where's this money coming from? Uh, that's where Marvin comes in. He's getting the 7,500 for us, and he gets it back off the top. I wish I could do more, Johnny. It's almost not right for me to get as much as everybody else. After all, all I do is... Your money counts for plenty, Marv. You don't hear any of them complaining, do you? Sure. You're okay in our book, Marv. But look, Johnny, if these two hoods get paid in advance, how do you know they're going to do their jobs? I'll vouch for them. These guys are pros. They can't afford to weasel out on a deal. If they did, they'd be washed up. Okay? Okay. Any other questions? Well, let's take a look at this, then. This is a rough drawing of the track as I remember it. Randy, you'll have to get me an A1 street map of the whole district. George, Mike, I want you to go over this thing with me inch by inch. Bring it completely up to date. Add or subtract the slightest change, even if it's something as small as the placing of a hot dog stand. Now, give or take a few thousand, I figure the loot on this deal at two million. Hmm. There should be that much in the track offices. That includes profits on the parimutuel betting, the breakage money, taxes from the mutual machines, receipts from the concessions, and the money from ticket sales. None of this money is allowed to accumulate at any one point around the track, except for money to make change with and the mutual clerks pay off money while it all goes into the office. And out of the entire take, only a few thousand dollars is put in the office safe to cover emergencies. The rest is out in the open, held for pickup by armored car. That car arrives about five o'clock and parks directly in front of the main entrance to the clubhouse. Two men stay in it, one at the wheel, the other at a machine gun in the turret. Two others enter the office to collect the dough. Now, they're armed, of course, and so are the track detectives who cover them from the car to the office and back. Now, once the armored car arrives, a uh, stick-up is... is out of the question. Pete with a baby doing outside the door. Uh, what do you think? You guys, any of you ever see this woman before? It's Sherry, my wife. Why, you, you've been talking. I just spilled to her. Well, I didn't ask. What, do you think I'm crazy? I wouldn't jerk you, clown. Come on, clown, sing us a chorus from Pagliacci. You better talk, George. Come clean. Either you talk or we'll get it out of her. Please, you wouldn't do anything to her, Johnny, please. But if you won't talk, if you won't tell us what you told her... Well, I didn't tell her nothing. Honest, I didn't. Why, why would I do a thing like that, Johnny? Sure, she wouldn't. She's just a building inspector, isn't she? Just stopped outside that door to measure the keyhole. Why, you... Let's have it, George. We're gonna get it out of one of you. If you didn't tell her anything, then why was she around here snooping? She must have found the address in my pocket. Sure, that's what it was. Thought I was two-timing her, you know. Running around with another... Of course, she's just checking up on me, John. I didn't. You'll let her go, won't you? You won't hurt her, John. Randy, Mike, take him home to his apartment and stick with him until I phone you. No, oh, I'm not leaving. Sure, you're leaving, all right. Now, how are you going? Sliding or walking? 